uh, our next speaker is Hans Winslow. So he will tell us about module categories over a WW module. Uh, Other well, categories, namely uh, for the rest of you with know, the model and uh, related to charge conjugation. So I will explain all of this uh, in a moment. Or uh, <clears throat> from a physics point of view, if you could view it, we want to find boundary, uh, boundary conform field theories for this. Uh, uh, for these models. So, all right, let's start with the beginning. Let's just do a baby example here. Uh, it's just if you take C to be a rep G and H is a subgroup, then of course a rep H is a, is a module category with respect to G uh, via the restriction function. I think that's all. Anyway, okay. W, the model action, if this is in rep H, and this is in rep G, is of course just given we, we restrict to V and, and we, have a, we have a tensor product of, of uh, H models. Right, then another thing I want to say is uh, uh, that theorem by Ostrich, which says that uh, module categories can be characterized by uh, uh, as a modules, module category of C, and there exists an algebra object, object A, such that M is uh, the, the A modules in C. So so for our example, for instance, A would be if if, if for rep H, then A would be just the maybe you could take the induction from H to G of the trivial representation. All right, then let's do some explicit examples, which we need later. So it's for instance, if you take the BH to be S to N embedded in S to N. And let's play it safe. And usually, and it will be odd because that's the simpler case. So then one can actually describe this then in H to T. Or, okay, S. Hans, Hans yes? can you write larger? It's very difficult to read. Okay, all here. right. Yes, okay, thanks. Uh, can I erase? Okay, I'll try later. Okay, so H S O N into S U N, then this can be described uh, as a direct sum of uh, lambda one, lambda N minus one, where two divides lambda I of X lambda. So, so there is, exists some combinatorial description how, how to do this. So if you, if you induce up the trivial representation of S O N to S U N, then this will be the direct sum of all highest grade modules with satisfy this condition. And another one to is let's take H to be SPN minus one into SUN. Then we get actually all of them. So oh, there's no restriction. All right, let's go to, now to, to the best of the written modules. So maybe I, I can let me go here. So uh, let's just take maybe SUNK. But we could take any. So this is a modular category. So that means we have a representation of SO2Z on VC, which is just as a basis labeled by the lambda, which are the irreducibles of C. So a labels, labeling set of the irreducibles, uh, let's call it maybe I lambda or IC, so something like this. So labeling set for irreducibles. And so if M is a module category, 
then uh, it's known that there exists a modular uh, invariant, which is uh, just, uh, okay, I, I will keep it vague here. Just it, it's a, a matrix M in and VC, which has integer non negative integer coefficients. And M commutes with the SL2C action. Okay, there's a little bit more, but I, I'm not going to worry. Okay, so. Uh, in some sense, if you want to classify a study model categories, one thing is you look at modular invariants. And I'm talking more about the kind of easy ones than the classical ones. So here are some easy, easy ones. So one is called the orbifolds. It's basically if say let's do it for SU3, then here these are the invertible objects. Uh, so each invariable object produces a permutation matrix. So if X is in the invertible object, we get a permutation matrix EX because tensoring by X permutes the irreducibles. And then if, if U is, is a, a subgroup of the center, a uh, center of SUN, then we get, uh, we get uh, a modular invariant MU, which is just the sum of all the PX. And uh, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. This is isomorphic to the center. So, okay. So, so if you take a subgroup of invertibles, then we just take X and U. So these are the, the sometimes the easy ones. Another one is called. It's usually called charge conjugation, which mid C, which just maps X to its to, to X bar. So we again get from this a, a permutation matrix M U, which just is the corresponding permutation matrix. And then of course we can also multiply those together. So then we also get uh, another one is just. Uh, uh, sorry, so this is MC. I call this here MC. Yeah, we can MU times MC would be another one. And so in general, so uh, we will get to get, uh, so we get here uh, as many, uh, we get here as many model invariants as we have subgroups. And here for each subgroup, we get a second one uh, from the charge conservation. So we get two times the number of devices of N uh, modular invariance. Okay. So now the point is we want to describe them because so far this doesn't really say that much about, about the, the, category, uh, the model categories. So, Uh, an explicit construction in the first case is well now this has been known for a long time so i'm not going to say much so for the for the orbifolds the algebra is essentially given to the by, by the subgroup okay, so so what about the other ones so one can actually this has been explicitly calculated. So for the other ones, for the charge conjugation, explicitly calculated for SU3 by various methods. And so essentially there are two cases. Uh, one is for SU3, SU3 uh, even level, and say u, u equals the, the trivial one. So these are just given by the algebra object is just given by the direct sum of all x lambda. 
uh, x lambda in s u n k and two divides only lambda i. And for s u three odd and u equals one, a is given by x lambda for no restriction, which looks very similar to this one here, except that now, uh, of course, here we have to restrict to, to the, yeah, sorry, I guess I'm writing again small. So this, this is again the objects in S U N K. So, so, and for U equals, if U is equal to center, I mean, because the other one would be C mod three, then it follows A consists of the same thing as before. And uh, here also, it seems three has to divide the number of, of uh, the lambdas. It means uh, X lambda is in P S U three K. And essentially the same thing here. Is, uh, well, the only thing is three is lambda is is in P S U three K. So what's the point of this is that these the algebras correspond to this modular invariants are essentially some fusion version of the algebras for these classical embeddings. So having seeing it like this, then the following this suggests the following approach. Try this also for the uh, in general. I should say that this uh, <clears throat> this general approach I came out with uh, discussions with Payne Eddie Mitchell, who is here, who who classified uh, for the module uh, module categories, at least in the type two case. So, your yeah, question. Can we describe, can we, or can we describe uh, module categories or S, U, and K, say, or and later in general via suitable subgroups? Now, of course, in some sense already, these examples uh, suggest the, the obvious subgroups. So, and again, now we have to be here. I, I have I have to assume an n odd. There are some similar cases for n even, but they are a little bit more messy to describe. So, S U N K K even. Of course, we take S O N. Un and for S U N K K odd, we take S P N minus one into S U N. Now this indeed works at least. Well, not uh, not all cases have been fully proved, but we are, so far we have the following cases. So the theorem, this is actually already a somewhat old result. Okay. So this works, uh, Works for S O N to S U N. So for K for, for even level. And it's sort of again 
uh, vague definition of almost proof, I think. I, I, I was hoping it to be done with it for this talk, but uh, it seems there is some nasty technicality. So also for S P N minus one into S S U N. So in particular, we can get a detailed description of this. So the algebra was uh, uh, described essentially just by this formal induction procedure. So at least the combinatorics can be read off essentially from the known combinatorics of the Lie groups. And let's see what else. Do we So yeah, I, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to write down the combinatorics again. So, and this works for if if you if you equals c mod n. So now again, we expect this works in general for. For, for all, not just for, yeah, so, okay, let me write down this. So, so what would be the algebra? So conjectured, I'll, I mean, it, it has been proved for u equals c mod n. It, it, this would, of course, just be the induction of the trivial uh, object. Uh, Induction of uh, say H K to S U N mod U K of the trivial one. So where here H is either uh, S S O N or S P N minus one, depending on the case. Uh, all right, now I should perhaps also say here, this is just HK is really just, uh, <clears throat> I didn't really say exactly what HK would be in this case. It's a, so let me just say a little bit how this uh, result is proved. So the, so the idea of the proof, Is the following. So, yeah, maybe I, I go over that. So, we start out with a classic setting. So, Let's take V to be the vector representation. So then we look at an H is a subgroup of S U N. So again, H is one of those two guys. Then we consider N of V tensor N, uh, S U N, which is contained in N H. S uh, V tensor N. So now here, of course, this is known. This is generated by essentially a symmetric group. Uh, so this is generated by. Uh, generated by SN, by surety. And in this case here, it, we only need one more generator. And SN. So one more channel. The channel really depends a little bit on, on, the, on the group here. So the first step is get a Q deformation. Now, which here we know we get the Hecke algebra with a braid generators T1 up to g n minus one. And 
So we know what the Q deformation is here. So now here, uh, we, we have a channel as E, G1, Gn minus one. And we only need to calculate the relations between E and G1. It turns out E will have to commute with the other guys. Uh, at least, well, um, an evil commuter uh, will not commute at most this G2, again, depending on the case. But uh, let's see, for H equals SPN minus one, uh, E will only, uh, not, the only non-trivial relation will involve E and G1. And for this, we use some uh, dimension, compati dimension compatibility. Basically, it means what we want is the trace of E G1 is equal to trace E trace G1. So this gives us an equation and which together with the braid relations will, uh, will uh, determine the relations. And now, let's see. Uh, okay. I think I have about five minutes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right. <laughs> I think that will be fine. So, so essentially, now let's call this uh, HN. The Hecke algebra, let's call this uh, this algebra Dn. Then, of course, we have natural inclusion. So the module action that corresponds to, to embedding, uh, say, Dn tends uh, Hm into. Yeah, which is the obvious embedding dn plus m, which is pretty obvious just the way, I mean, it's obvious, for, I didn't write down the relations, but it's just, you, you just add, uh, you add to, to this um, what rate generators, so, and that will see embedding. So, yeah, and so, and then in, in order to get the, the module categories for the fusion category, now mod out, negligible morphisms or for uh, essentially we have natural trace functions to this we model out by the annihilator ideas of these trace functions and then you, you get get module category of s u n k now as i said this has been done uh, for this case already a while ago, for this one, at least the, the first part has, a, has been posted already. That means the Q deformation part, uh, the algebras and relations have been defined. There seems to be some uh, annoying little technicality things to, 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 uh, to, do, uh, to prove this, this uh, quotient construction. But I mean, I'm sure it's correct, but somehow I don't, the methods I have used so far don't seem to be pretty tedious. All right. And that's, yeah, now I'm done then. So, anything. Okay, maybe it's just the last thing. Uh, there exists more. So, other cases. I already played around a little bit with the other case. So, there's, for instance, the case uh, that uh, for such stuff. Is supposed to exist for all graph automorphisms. So for Dn, well, well, here the, the subgroup is not surprisingly. So if this is Dn, then this would be uh, which corresponds to SO2n. Then you get SO2n minus one. This would be the subgroup. And uh, I think for triality. Uh, we have the, the C3 action, 
the age would be G2. So, so there are already various tests. I mean, I have already run uh, various tests about the thing. So it, it seems so far everything indicates that it should work for this virus too. Uh, okay, so I think I leave it with that. Uh, We have quite some time for questions. So again, uh, use the microphone, speak your name slowly, please. Yeah, I have a good question. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so the original motivation for this was to construct subfactors, and so this has been proved, like in this case. Subfactors have been constructed, right? the indices have been constructed. So you can think of this as a quantum version of the impedance S or N to S to N. So in the classical limit, the index will go to infinity. But I, I mean, I have explicit formulas for the index, which is. Uh, yeah. So at the beginning, you. Um, ruled out, you, you focused on any N odd. Um, so N even is different, there's a fixed point. Yes, yes. How have you worked out? Uh, yeah, yeah, so there are also, uh, so for N even there are more because you can both consider, uh, again, you get something S or into S or N, although this is a little misnomer, it's, it's, it looks more like O N than S N, but so there are some subtleties. And you get a second one for S P N also into S U N. So uh, in this case, I have two of them. And again, both of the algebras will live in PSUN. So, so and we again, uh, we would expect that one can extend them to, to bigger uh, subgroups of, of uh, bigger quotient groups of SUN. Yeah. Yes, I mean, uh, I think, where Kane and I be talking about it. So I think we can find such, uh, 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 subgroup interpretations of this multiple for all possible cases. Well, I'll ask my actually, suppose you take SU2 embedded SU1 using the n dimensional representation. SU2 and SN. See, in anything? most, see, in most cases, this does not work. Okay. Okay. And, and, and like, for instance, Okay, now, I may, okay, maybe one more thing. Which is, in, say, originally, when I did this thing, then um, David Jordan told me, oh, you know, what you constructed, like this deformation construction, can be realized by something called co ideal subalgebras, by it's where Gay Latstein and other people have defined co ideal subalgebras of the quantum group. And so I thought for a while, okay, it, it, uh, yeah, of course, you can't expect this to work for any subgroup. I said, you know, quantum semantic spaces that should, should work. And I, I wasted quite a bit of time trying it for say SUR cross SUN minus R, and I didn't go anywhere. And of course, uh, if I had actually learned a little bit like, like uh, of Terry, and I, so it would have been clear that you couldn't, there are not just enough modular invariants around that I could get something because these guys already exhaust everything. So, so it was kind of stupid. This, there's module categories for the quantum group, for, for other groups, but but they they don't seem to be uh, carry over to the to the fusion category. Okay. Uh, back and again. Thank you.